What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Truck Talk brought to you by me, inspired by my man, Chili. If you guys have been watching the channel a long time, you probably have heard me ragging on you for being a broke turd. Yeah, I see y'all in the comments complaining about the freaking prices of stuff and complaining about how you, uh, you, you know, you can't afford the things that you want and all this stuff. And, you know, you, you, ha you blame it on everything, man. You blame it on the government. You blame it on inflation. You blame it on the freaking global sickness that happened. You blame it on all kinds of crap, the reasons why you're broke. And, uh, you know, it's a sad state of affairs. I, I saw a statistic that said 58% uh, of Americans have less than $5,000 in their savings account. That's sad, dude. That's real sad. If you're broke... That's a freaking problem. And I thought, you know what, man? If I'm on dog on these heads for being broke turds, it's kind of messed up if I don't give them a little bit of advice, a little financial advice on how to unbroke themselves. And so that's what today's all about. I'm going to give you guys uh, five tips on uh, how to get unbroke. All right. Why am I talking about this? Well, at this point in my life, I have accumulated some wealth. I have everything I want, and I have extra. And so I'm not the richest man on earth, but uh, I'm doing better than I have personally ever done in my life. And I'm going to tell you how I did that. The first thing, the foundation of it all, is uh, quit making excuses for being broke, man. Quit blaming it on other things, on other circumstances. On Look, if you're, if you're broke... And you don't have, you can't afford to have the things that you want, live the lifestyle that you want to live. It's because of your own poor decisions. That's what it's. That's that. It, that's what it is. Sorry, sorry. That's what it is. Now the good thing about that is you can start turning that around by by making good decisions. And that's what these five things are. The first thing: quit buying crap that you can't afford, man. I get it. I was raised to think that if you didn't borrow money, you could never have anything. I was raised in a way that to think that, you know, you could never own your house outright. outright. Uh, if you wanted the car that you wanted, uh, if you wanted to buy that, you were going to have to borrow money to get it and all this stuff. And and I was raised that borrowing money uh, in a way that that, that that was okay. Well, I've learned through the years that that's not okay. You know why that's not okay? Because the borrower is the slave to the lender. And you need to quit borrowing money to buy crap that you can't afford, right? You can still have the things you want. It's just going to take you longer to get them. And you got to be patient enough and you got to work hard enough to get the things that you want when you can finally afford them. And so you are enslaved to the people that you're borrowing money from. And you're never going to get ahead if you keep doing that. Uh, the second thing, I believe in a principle uh, summed up by a simple phrase. You reap what you sow. It's happening to you. Whether you believe it or not, you are going to reap what you sow in life. So the second thing you need to do is you need to give intentionally. Whatever you can give you need to give intentionally, right? You need to be generous. Uh, and along the same lines, you need to spend intentionally, meaning you need to spend your money with, with companies who are aligned with good, uh, wholesome, American, for me, Christian values. Uh, you need to spend your money locally as, as much as possible and you need to you need to be intentional. So many of us just spend our money uh, purely based off of convenience, and that's why we do all of our shopping on uh, on Amazon and we buy all of our stuff at the freaking Walmart, right? Because we don't give a crap. We don't spend intentionally. We don't care about we don't care about values and principles and and uh, and what the people are doing. Uh, who we're spending our money with. We should care about that. And let me just go ahead and tell you, you reap what you sow. So that's number two. Number three, 
Whatever extra money you have, you should invest in tangible assets or skills. I have never once had a single dollar in the stock market or in the, the, the Bitcoin or any of that crap, right? You know what I've never lost money on? Houses, land, guns, and ammunition. Never lost money on them. Always made money on them, especially houses and land. Always made money on them. You guys want to you guys want a get rich quick scheme and you want to be able to put your money in all this freaking wazoo made up bull crap and you think it's going to pan out for you. Well, some of you might get lucky. Maybe some of you have gotten lucky. Uh but let me tell you. It's it's getting lucky. That's all it is. It's not a good foundational thing to do. If you have extra money, invested in tangible assets and skills. You know why skills are so valuable? You can be rich in skills. Skills are so valuable because skills are going to allow you to make money and no one can ever take your skills from you. Even tangible assets can be taken from you. Skills can never be taken from you. And if you are a skilled person, you will always be able to make money always with the skills that you possess. So that's what you should invest in, tangible assets and skills. That's what I've invested in my entire life and it's panned out really well for me. All right, number four, dream big, okay? I told you guys earlier, quit buying crap that you can't afford. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't want really awesome stuff. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't look at the house you want. You shouldn't look at the, the car you want. You, sh you shouldn't look at the gun you want. You should look at those things. You should dream big. You should scroll through whatever, the freaking Zillow or the marketplace or whatever, and, and look at the things you want and dream big, all right? And it's going to drive you towards those things. It's going to incentivize you to work harder so that you can eventually buy those things that you really, really want to have. Dream big. All right. The last one, number five. You are going to have to work hard enough to make twice the amount of money, at least twice the amount of money that you think you need to make. So if you think that you can live the lifestyle that you absolutely want to live, the perfect lifestyle, the house you want, the car you want, and you, you are using, you're able to have freedom with your time and whatever that looks like for you. If you think you can do that on a hundred thousand dollars a year, Go ahead and accept the fact that you are going to have to figure out how to work hard enough to make $200,000 a year at a minimum twice what you think you need. And you know why that is? It's because you are punished. You and me are punished for being uh, finan or for striving to be financially independent. You are punished for saving money. You will be punished for being fiscally responsible. Our government punishes us for that because they don't want us to be financially independent because they know that people who are financially independent, who are skilled, who have assets, who have land, who have their home paid for, they're not slaves to the lender, uh, who have the free time that they need to think and enjoy life they know that we are hard to control. We're really hard to control. So just go ahead and calculate in that fact that you're going to be punished if you decide to work hard enough to achieve the life you want to achieve and become financially independent. So those are the five tips. Quit buying things you can't afford. Give and spend intentionally. You reap what you sow. Invest your money in tangible things uh, or skills. Dream big and work hard enough to make twice what you think you need to make to live the lifestyle that you want to live. That sums it up, guys. 
that's the best way that I can tell you that I've gotten into the place that I'm in today. And the whole foundation of the problem with you being broke is the fact that you are easily controlled and manipulated by the freaking, the tyrannical government that is when you are broke. They can keep you under their thumb, right? That's why it's a freaking problem. That's why we should all strive to have the lifestyle that we want to have. That's why we should all work hard and we should be financially responsible. Now, this is going to take time. If you do it my way, I'm 36 years old, man. And it, this has been the, the position that I'm in today is a, is a culmination of about two decades of hard work, really hard work and making good decisions and not always having the things that I wanted to have and not always doing the things that I wanted to do. So this way right here, it's going to take time, but it is guaranteed to work. So freaking strive to not be a broke turd and quit making excuses and blaming it on everyone else and on the circumstances around you. Get off your stinking lazy butt and start acting right. If you got anything out of this episode, go get you a hat, get you a t-shirt. Keep my man Chili in the dungeon, and I'll keep these truck talks coming. I love you guys. Enough said.